It seems like AMD may be getting ready to release their new chips for handhelds, and Lenovo may be leading the way. It's Sunday, so let's get sensational. I'm Mike, and I'm back to talk about the gaming news. Just like I'm sure Lenovo will be back with their updated Legion Go handhelds. So we talked about the rumors going around about Lenovo's upcoming handhelds. At the time, the rumor was that they would be doing two handhelds, a Legion Go Lite and a Legion Go 2, and then pictures of the shell of the Legion Go Lite leaked. Well, apparently they may actually be doing three handhelds. So Notebook Check found three new listings for Legion Go handhelds, with each new listing having a model number attached to it. And those model numbers are 88RP1, 88HP2, and 88SP3. And the only reason I mention these models is because it's currently believed that these models refer to AMD's upcoming Z2 chips. Now with AMD's current chips, they have the Z1 and Z1 Extreme that they designed exclusively for handhelds. And to my knowledge, the only one that uses the Z1 is a cheaper version of the RG Ally. But with the Z2, there was some speculation that only one of the new processors would be an upgrade from the Z1 Extreme. So the other part of the rumor is that they'll have the Z2 Extreme, which will be the new, more powerful chip, the Z2, which will essentially be the same as the Z1 Extreme, and the Z2G, which is going to be based on an even older architecture, so we don't even know where that's going to fall performance-wise. But based on Lenovo's filing, it's being speculated that they could be using all three, and specifically using the Z2G, the lower-end one, in the Go Lite. But outside of these filings, there's nothing else playing to Lenovo. Lenovo doing three handhelds. It could be like the original ROG Ally where they offer two versions of the Legion Go 2 and one is cheaper with a regular Z2 and then one is more expensive with a Z2 Extreme and then they have the even cheaper option with the Go Lite. But again, this is all speculation including AMD's Z2 chips, but I feel like we'll find out what AMD and Lenovo are up to pretty soon. But of course, the most popular handheld PC is the Steam Deck and outside of doing the OLED model, they haven't released an updated version of the Steam Deck. While two Valve employees have been doing a bunch of interviews recently since they finally launched the Steam Deck in Australia, and of course they were asked about a Steam Deck too. Basically they said they're not going to do a new Steam Deck every year because it's not fair to customers to come out with something so soon that's only incrementally better. Then they go on to say that they're watching the APUs that are coming out, and for them to do a second Steam Deck it would have to be a significant performance uplift that doesn't sacrifice battery life, and they would have to be able to keep the price down on it as well. So yeah, basically that's the same thing that everyone at Valve has been saying since the Steam Deck came out. They're not going to do a new Steam Deck every year, and they also mentioned before that keeping the hardware the same gives the developers a target to aim for, similar to a console, and the benefit of that is if you have a more powerful handheld and the game is designed to run on a Steam Deck, it'll run even better on that one. But I can definitely see where Valve is coming from with their approach. Like, we saw Asus release the RG Ally X, and they did make some big improvements, so like battery life, they added more RAM, they added more features, but they put the same Z1 Extreme back in there instead of saving these changes for when AMD released a new APU. But let me know how you feel in the comments. Do you think we need a yearly refresh for the Steam Deck, or do you think that handhelds should wait until there's actually a big performance boost to do a new version? All right, so remember how last week we talked about the Riot layoffs? Well, this week, it's a variety of messes. Like, the whole week is messy. Can we just, like, throw it away and start over? All right, so I guess we need to talk about Netflix. So. If you're not familiar, Netflix officially got into gaming a few years ago, and up until this point they had mainly been doing mobile games, but they've been promising that they were going to do some original AAA games, to the point where they even started a studio, and they hired three executives who worked on games like Halo, God of War, and Overwatch to form the studio Team Blue. So they brought all these people in in 2022 to develop a AAA game, and now they have shut down Team Blue. So Netflix confirmed that they have closed the studio and that the three executives they bought in are no longer with the company. There's no mention of how many people were at the studio, if other people were let go as well as a result of this, or if they were actively working on a game. But yeah, it seems like since they've been finding success with mobile games, they're basically going to stick with that for now. I'm not sure how successful their gaming venture has been overall, but this could be a sign that they're shifting their focus away from gaming. That's the complete opposite of Ubisoft, who seems to be focused fully on money. I mean gaming. So the good news about this story is at least no one got laid off, but a team within Ubisoft has been disbanded. So the team behind Prince of Persia The Lost Crown has been disbanded. The official reason given was that the game didn't live up to sales expectations. Now the Engadget article points out that the game sold about 300,000 copies in its first few weeks and made around 15 million in revenue. They also point out that the game launched at $60, which could have hurt it sales-wise since it was a retro-style side-scrolling game. 
But that doesn't sound too bad sales wise to me at least for what the game was and the price they charged for it. But at least the team wasn't let go, basically they have been broken up and moved to support other projects. So at least in comparison to some of the other recent stories, no one lost their job. Members of the team also mentioned they had a really good experience when developing the game. So it's not all bad, it just sucks that people were waiting for a sequel or more content for that game. But this next story isn't actually about a game, it's about Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella. So I don't think it needs to be said that there were a lot of layoffs in gaming this year and Microsoft was one of those companies that laid off a lot of people from their gaming division. Basically, since the start of the year, they laid off at least 2,500 people. They also closed Arkane Austin, who made Redfall, Tango Gameworks, who made Hi-Fi Rush, which thankfully got purchased by another company and got saved, but there were also other Bethesda employees laid off as well. Now, I will say I understand how companies work. Each section of the company has a different budget and different expectations, so Microsoft overall could be profitable, but the gaming portion could be losing money. I get it. I've worked for a lot of corporations. I get it. But with that being said, Microsoft CEO despite all these layoffs, I actually got a pretty big raise, a $30 million raise. So Microsoft CEO previously took a pay cut in 2023 after Microsoft had a security breach, but now he's getting a large increase. Now I will say his pay isn't entirely his salary. His salary is actually a small part. A lot of it is paid in bonuses and in stock. But basically, in total, he went from making $39.24 million last year to $71.24 million this year. And I know this may be controversial for me to say, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think even with that pay cut last year, he was, he was probably good. Like he was good. Like I think he probably didn't even notice. But anyway, of course, the reason that everyone is talking about this gigantic raise is because of all the jobs they cut this year, especially in gaming. Like I mentioned before, I get each department has their own budget, but it looks bad when you lay off over 2000 people and then give $30 million to the CEO. That's why most of the time when these corporations do these layoffs, especially bigger companies, I'm like, you technically had the money to not lay people off. But it's really just about maximizing profits, which I think this is a blatant example of. All right, with that mess out of the way, let's shift our focus onto something kind of funny involving Nintendo. In fact, that's what we're going to talk about today. And our final story. So I didn't cover this at the time, but a couple of weeks ago, Nintendo decided to do a playtest of some new mysterious online thing. Now, in order to get into this playtest, you had to be a Nintendo Switch Online member with the expansion pass. There was also a sign-up form you had to complete, and it had to be approved by Nintendo. And on that form, you had to promise, and I mean promise not to reveal anything about the playtest. But in an unexpected turn of events, details about the playtest got revealed. So it looks like Nintendo is testing an MMO-style game where you customize your character and farm land to build a space where presumably other people can visit. Some people think it might be like a new version of the Miiverse. They also mentioned that the game is gonna have some user-generated content as well. So it seems like it could be pretty cool, but obviously it was gonna leak when you have your regular users testing something. Now Nintendo has been issuing DMCA takedowns for any footage or even pictures of the game that's gotten out. So I'm not gonna be showing anything in this video, but yeah, what do they really expect to happen when they essentially are doing a public playtest? But let me know how you feel in the comments about the Nintendo's potential upcoming game MMO Miiverse thing. Again, let me know down below, and if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a co-worker, like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button thing so you know if I drop a video or a live stream, and always release two things at the same time. Peace.